Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday CT. We're in the middle of a little series on how the ACT sections compare to the new SAT section. So if you're struggling to figure out which test is better for you, hopefully these videos are going to help you. And today we are talking about how the ACT math compares to the new SAT math section. So let's take a look at some of the similarities and differences between these two tests. So first of all, regarding the calculator. One of the big things about the new SAT is that it has a no calculator section and that is going to be 20 questions and 25 minutes that you have to go through with no calculator. Now for the most part those questions well, you don't need a calculator for, but it doesn't mean you're not doing calculations. So if you're somebody who's not comfortable doing some basic math or really with doing a lot of manipulating of equations, so for example, maybe you'll have an equation and you need to figure out what the slope is, but you can't use your graphing calculator or a function that you need to evaluate or things like that, if you're not quite that comfortable without having your calculator in hand, that's something to be aware of. On the ACT, free range or calculator on the entire math section. Now let's talk about grid-ins and multiple choice questions. So on the ACT, all the questions are multiple choice, so you have answer choices for all of them. On the SAT, and this is true for the old SAT and the new SAT as well too, you're going to have some questions that you are just going to be gridding in or putting in your own answer for. So there's 80% multiple choice questions on the new SAT and 20% of the questions you are not going to have the help of answer choices. You're going to need to input your own answer on the new SAT. Now the content is interesting because it used to be a big difference between the ACT and the SAT. The ACT covered some more advanced topics like trig, like matrices, like complex numbers, and now the new SAT is going to be covering some of those concepts as well too. It's all on a pretty basic level, but it's important to know that you're going to need to either brush up on some of these algebra 2 slash trig concepts or perhaps learn a few basics so that you can pick up those questions if that's part of your game plan for the math. And finally, let's take a look at how much time you have per question and how many questions there are. So on the ACT, you have 60 questions that you need to answer in 60 minutes. So talk about math. It's a pretty easy math. That gives you one minute per question on the ACT. SAT and math not so easy. You have 58 questions. Why they didn't pick a nice round number, I'm not sure. But you have 80 minutes to do them, so you have a lot more time. You actually have, there's a little bit of a difference. You have a little bit more time to answer the ones that you can use a calculator on versus the no calculator. But it averages out to about 1 minute and 22 seconds per question. So you might not be quite as pressed for time on the SAT, although that time's there to give you some time to really think through some more complex questions that the SAT likes to throw at you but a lot of students, I think, will continue to feel that they're not quite as pressed for time on SAT math as they are on ACT math, which you have to do the questions very quickly. So those are some basics on how the two tasks compare. If you're still not sure which task is right for you or you just want to practice both of them, you can go to magoosh.com. We have practice questions and lessons for both the ACT and the new SAT for you to check out. Do some good test prep.